Now it's time for a test. You've all eaten all the brain food that Larry Scott served you. Thank you, Larry. Everybody feeling smart? Who was James Phipps? Anybody, anybody? James Phipps. Okay. Since no one got that right, let's try a, a, another one. This is a lot easier. Who's afraid about dying of smallpox today? Nobody. You got that right. Give yourself a round of applause. Nobody is going to die of smallpox today. And that's because in 1796, James Phipps was eight years old. He was afraid of dying of smallpox. So were his parents. So was pretty much everybody else on the planet Earth in 1796. But this was the time of the scientific revolution. And because of his research, Edward Jenner developed a vaccine and James Phipps was the first person vaccinated against smallpox and he lived. Yeah, good for James. And, and Good for Edward Jenner, too, because as the idea spread, thousands and then millions of people, adults and children, were vaccinated around the world. And what happened to smallpox? It was eradicated from the face of the earth. Now, today, you're not going to die from smallpox, and you all passed that test, which is great. You don't have to worry about it. That's because research produced vaccines and antibiotics. And today, your risk of dying from any infectious disease is very, very small. It all started with a single person, with James Phipps. Another question, I want to see hands. How many of you have lost someone you love to cancer? Keep them up. Heart disease, put them, two hands. Heart attack, diabetes, stroke. Alzheimer's, everybody. These diseases are the major killers of our time. And when they take someone we love, it makes you feel like those diseases are always gonna win. That's how James Phipps and his parents used to think about smallpox. But my brilliant colleagues at the Feinstein Institutes don't think that way, not at all. In fact, we know otherwise because we're taking on today's problems with new research to change the trajectory of history. We have the best people in the world confronting the problems of today. Betty Diamond is the leader in lupus and autoimmune disease research. She heads an institute focused on unraveling the molecular mechanisms of lupus, inflammation, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, and sepsis. Tom McGinn leads an institute that's mining data from millions of patient interactions, innovating and improving how care is delivered at the bedside, blending physician experience and electronic evidence in real time. John Kane heads an institute focused on schizophrenia and opioid addiction and depression. These are major problems of our time that require the best and the brightest in the world to do what's needed to help these patients. Richard Barakat oversees a cancer institute. He's committed his life to expanding access to clinical trials and new experimental therapies for the 20,000 new cancer patients that come into Northwell every year. And Yusuf Alabed, leads the institute that's discovering and inventing new ways to turn off inflammation using electricity instead of drugs. These people are the best in the business. So now here you are too, helping us in this noble mission at the most exciting place in medical research on the planet. We're succeeding because you support us. You donate to our work. You are part of this story. And because of you, We've raised tonight more than $3.4 million, a new record. We have amazing support from extremely generous people like Susan and Leonard Feinstein. 
Barbara and Donald Zucker, Susan Karchis, and our many board members. They are all invested in us. We have the tireless support of Michael Dowling and Northwell Health. And together with you, we are all invested in a new future. Now let me be clear, this is not some distant future in a faraway time and place. It's happening already. Today we don't worry about smallpox, and tomorrow we might not worry about cancer and heart disease and Alzheimer's. Because there's a common thread to today's killers. It's not infection, it's inflammation. Inflammation is at the heart of today's problems. The good news is at the Feinstein Institute, we already have a James Phipps today. Her name is Kelly Owens. For 15 years, she suffered from the inflammation of Crohn's disease, failing all available medications, spending much of her time in hospitals and operating rooms, using a wheelchair and a cane. But she was treated with bioelectronic medicine. She received a computer chip implanted in her neck, controlling the nerve in her neck to turn off inflammation. And when the doctors turned on that chip, her inflammation stopped. Today, Kelly's in remission. She goes running at the gym. She told me last week that instead of spending millions of dollars on drugs in the last couple of years, this year she spent so far $19 on Zyrtec because she had an allergy. When I met Kelly, she gave me a gift, her cane. You can see it for yourself, still wrapped. It's sitting there in my office. Come see it, I'll show you. Because that's what it's all about. A patient cured. Her inflammation stopped with a device invented at the Feinstein Institutes. The best scientists in the world are working on the world's most important problems. Each of these scientists has an amazing track record of producing knowledge to cure disease in order to improve patients' lives. And there is so much more to do. We need to cure more women of postpartum depression. We need to enroll more cancer patients in clinical trials. And we need to treat countless more patients with inflammation. I only have one last question. Would you like to hear about more Kellys next year? I thought so. Me too. That's why we are racing down a path to wipe out the diseases we worry about today. And we're going to succeed. And you are a part of the story. Please keep supporting us. We need you, and from the bottom of my heart, thank you.